Well, they pass through a Mr Oliver, but I understand they come from the constituent entity. Yes, now, where's Mr Oliver? He's here somewhere. Is he in the hearing room? I believe so. Yes, well, that seems to remove one obstacle to getting instructions. No, it doesn't. Uh, you, you put that, of course, respectfully. I do. I, I don't quite understand that point. If, for example, Mr Oliver had just gone into hospital and was under a general anaesthetic, then, of course, your position would be um, impeccable. May I explain the point? Can I just conclude by saying this, that if Mr Oliver is here, it is possible to get instructions from him. If he has difficulties in getting instructions from others, this is just a, a possible point of view I'm putting to you, he should have come armed with them this morning to pass on to you. <coughs> Well, you, you say that. I do say that. That is a possible view, is it not? I don't accept that's a reasonable You don't accept view. it's even a possible view. Why not? Because, firstly, Mr Th Oliver, as you well know, Commissioner, does not have authority himself. I don't know anything about that at all. Well, we haven't been looking into the ACTU. We've been looking into the affairs of particular unions and particular individuals. Well, Commissioner, I don't want to be disrespectful, but you have just articulated a number of propositions which seem to indicate an understanding as to how the ACTU would operate. No. Huh? No. May I respond to Mr Stoljar's submission? Yes, by all means. Because, if I may say so, the last thing I have tried to do is to grandstand or make this a farce. The very last thing I've tried to do. Now, I've come along to make an application to obtain access to documents in the context of making it entirely clear that if the documents were produced, we would then need some time to consider it. The proposition then becomes, you've now got the documents, you've had a reasonable time to consider them and give advice and receive instructions and formulate a proper legal application. Now, in my submission, that conclusion is just not open. I haven't had sufficient time to give considered advice. I haven't had sufficient time to receive instructions, even if I had. And I haven't had sufficient time to work up what must be considered, and I certainly consider it to be, a very serious application. Now, if what's being said here is that I should have come along here armed with instructions to bring the application and ready to make it, that misses the point that until shortly after 10 a.m., shortly after 11.30 this morning, we didn't have all the information. We now have the information, and there is new light thrown on the facts, which I have to consider and give advice about. Now, to force someone on in those circumstances, in my submission, would be unfair in the sense of a denial of natural justice. Now, I don't have instructions to make an application today. If I receive such instructions, I will bring it. I'm well cognizant of the doctrine of waiver and where it fits into this area of the law. And if it's being suggested <coughs> that if I don't make it now, I will have forever waived it. My submission would be that would be wrong as a matter of law. Who said anything about that? I don't know. I just I don't I don't quite who, said, who said anything about that? No one said anything about that, but the proposition from Mr Stoljar seems to be that I'm grandstanding, intentionally creating a farce in circumstances where I should be put upon, presumably by you, to bring an application that I don't have instructions to make. How many um, hours or days will it take for you to carry out all the um, steps that you outlined a little earlier? Uh, a week would be um, a week would be sufficient and I could do it quicker, quicker, quicker than that if required. I think we'll adjourn until 4pm and we'll reconsider the matter then after Mr Bergson hopefully has finished his evidence. Hearing is now adjourned.